the, the Fitzy and Whipper podcast. Hey, let's Hello, how are you? Just hanging outside you? your kitchen there, mate. I am, yeah. This is a different setting from last time, Jim. Don't tell me you've got numerous properties. You've got a huge property portfolio. I uh, look, no, I do all right. But the, the last time I was doing it in me in my assistant's house, that's why there was all the Grateful Dead posters in the background oh. and guitars and, and the young men, young male like endeavors behind me. You know? oh. it's like, so now I'm just in my house, but my baby's out at the moment, so it's all Good right. News. Okay, <laughs> mate. Exciting to know that you've um, announced your second show for good old Sydney Town. You yeah, little, you're, you've sold out the first you one. Little you're, beauty. You're, you're, a, you're a sellout, Jim Jeffries. Everyone's saying well, you're I've a sellout. Been, I, yeah, I've been saying that for years, but I, 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 um, I, I, I didn't plan on doing any show. I was literally, I was doing a tour of Asia, and then I was going to pop down and see me dad for Christmas, uh. and then you know my manager, he, he's basically you know, Colonel Parker. He can't have me have a day off, you know what I mean? So he goes, he's working he goes, it. I go, I just like two weeks in Australia, just hanging out, going to the beach, all that stuff. And he goes, go on, you can do a show. You can do a show. And I was like, all right. And he goes, do one before New Year's. It's good for people. And I, and he sold it to me. So I was like, brilliant. You know, the gigs in Australia were so good on um, the last tour. So I thought, brilliant, I'll do one. And then he rings me up, that one's sold out. Come on. Come on. You can do it. So, so I believe this will be the last one, but if he has his way, I'll be doing him until about March. You're doing two weeks of shows in a row. Jim, I love some of the clips that are getting around on TikTok of you, and they're right up my alley. They're highly inappropriate, which is your gear. Am I Am I, Am I? I on TikTok? Yeah. Like, like, like with people mouthing me or something? No, I'm no, not no. On I think it'd be like comedy pages that I follow. What I wanted to ask was, how often does someone physically stand up and leave one of your shows? Oh... Uh, not as okay in the early days all the time yeah. all the time when i first got to america and i was just trying to crack it and i was doing clubs i was getting 20 percent walkouts oh, and stuff wow. like that awesome and Did uh you thrive on then that? I, yeah I, well, look i i believe that comedy you need to be diverse yes. you know like 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 whenever you see like I, I don't know if either of you guys have won any comedy awards, but like whenever you <laughs> see the person, whenever you see the person who wins the comedy award in like Edinburgh or Melbourne or whatever, I, I always look at that act and think, yeah, that's a person that twenty people on a panel could agree on. You know what yeah. I mean? Like yes. like I'll never win any of these things because people can't agree on me. And I think that's sort of the 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 sweet spot. But I'll tell you what, when we were in COVID, I was working with Bill Burr. Uh, oh yeah, and he. He's a yeah, fantastic comedian. He, and, and me and him are you know talk about similar sort of things. And yeah. we were doing one of those gigs that was like a, a drive-in yep. because COVID was happening. Yeah, so what would happen is all the cars would drive in. We'd do it at the Magic Castle in LA in the big car park. Mm-hmm. So we'd have we'd have eighty cars in front of us, and they'd all they'd all get given those clapping machine those clappers like this, so they could wag them no. out their window and say if they were enjoying it or whatever. No. Right? They weren't allowed to honk their horns because it was upsetting traffic, right? So they clap out their hands. But anyway, so he's he's on stage. He told a couple of jokes, and five cars drove oh, out. Like, it's, the, it's, the, it's, the, it's 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 depressing enough when they walk out. But when you see the engine turn on yep. and they have to back out, that's a determined person who's not enjoying Isn't it. Though. Hand your clapper in on the way out the door. <laughs> do you, have you had any big celebs in the audience? And do you target them, Jim, or do you want to know who's in there, or have you noticed uh, anyone? Brad Pitt's come to a few shows. He was my weatherman on me shows. Yes. So he's yes. he's come to he's always the, just the sweetest, nicest guy you'll ever meet in the world, yeah. right? One show we had recently, um Eddie Vedder awesome. came. Yes. And and that and he's one of those blokes when you meet Eddie Vetti, you sort of go, Oh, he's like a real entertainer. He's gonna think I'm a bloody oh, slob no. or something like that. Oh no. <laughs> Because you know what? He stuck around. My opening act is a huge Pearl Jam fan. I just said to him, I said, hey, Eddie Vedder's coming. Just be really cool, all right? He goes, yeah, no he's a Canadian guy. He's like, no problem. I'll be completely cool. Completely cool. Don't worry about it. All right? And then he's like, Eddie Vedder comes and he goes, it's such a pleasure to meet you, sir. And he shakes his hand and I forgot that he has a big Pearl Jam tattoo on his forearm. Oh. And it's like, oh, God. No. But that's... The, that's that's the thing with tattoos. People who are fans of things get tattoos of people on them. I've got a few people with tattoos of me on them. And I'll tell you what, they're the last people I want to meet on Earth. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> You're not going to meet someone with a tattoo of you and go, oh, I'd like to hang out with them. You think oh. they're going to wear my skin as a shirt. <laughs> All right, now, Jim, we need to address this because apparently we've, we're hearing whispers that you're going to be hosting a quiz show on Channel 7. Is that correct? I, I'm, a, I'm a game show host now, man. Wow. I'm, I'm hosting this, this show called The, the 1% Club. This show is going to be massive. It's, it's uh, really big in um, the UK and France already. Yeah. It's about yeah. to go worldwide. It's a, it's a cracker of a game show. It's uh, no general knowledge. It's, it's not about what you know. Yeah. It, it's how you think. So these right. are all like little, little type questions. So a 10 year old and a 100 year old have the same chance of winning the show. Mate, when are you in Australia? <laughs> when are you down next? I'm coming down for Christmas and I'm yep. doing those two shows. Yep, yep. And uh, then I'm staying to do the game show. So I'm going to be there for a couple of months. Okay. You're going to see me wandering around. Yeah, I love that. We'd love to have you in the studio. Can you come in. The thing yeah. is, we've got... What? Bring your old man too. Can we meet your old man? We can bring him in. Yeah, 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 yeah. he's all right. I'm getting a vasectomy <laughs> next week. Uh, and, and like on the 5th of November, I'm getting a vasectomy. And my old man goes, don't get it. Awesome. <laughs> Do you know what, Fitzy? Fitzy, like, you've had it done. Did you get it? Did you get the laughing gas, or did you get knocked out? I, no, I had the laughing gas. And you know what, Jim? No. Mate, the sur- I paid extra money. I'm getting knocked out. You know, I'm get- not staying up for this. The surgeon said to me, "I haven't done this in six months." And you know oh. the reason why I got told to ha- you have to do it because it's like your wisdom teeth is because they're on the ball. If they know that you're Literally. with it and and you're awake, they actually have to do a proper job. When you're out, Jim, they can do whatever they want down oh, there, and you've got no idea what's going on. I- I, I, I one time had a hemorrhoid operation. This is the only operation I've had in my whole life. I had a hemorrhoid operation. And they were about to get about 15, 16 stitches. There was, it, it was overdue. <laughs> it was carnage. Right? So they put me on this, this pyramid pillow. So my ass is right up in the air. Oh. I'm on a period and my, my face is in like a massage chair hole. Oh. And, and, and they're just about to knock me out before they do it. And this is one of the times you don't want to be famous. You know, you hope you've gone in there. You hope you're in there and no one recognises you. But the last thing that was said to me before I went under was one of the nurses went, my boyfriend is your biggest fan. And then I passed out, right? So the, the, whole, the whole time I was in turmoil, right? And then I woke up. All, that's all I could think about, like, what are the chances that she didn't go back to her boyfriend and comment on my ass over dinner that night? You should have seen the grapes hanging out of Jim Jeffries. Oh, shit. <laughs> Jim, some of the best we've ever seen. Isn't that extraordinary? He started making his own wine. Oh, Jim, if you are coming home for Christmas, give us a Christmas present and come into the studio. We'd love to see you, love legend. You. Love you, Jim. Thanks for coming on the show, buddy. Thanks for having me, lads. I, I enjoy it every time. The Fitzy and Whipper Podcast.